Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Your Spiritual Journey. This is Dr. Bob, and this is the space and the place where we talk about things important to your soul. And as always, we ask you to like us, uh, to subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube, and if you would, consider supporting us on Patreon. Well, today's guest, I got to say, is my first joker of, <laughs> of this podcast. Uh, Lance, Sp Lance is, is really something. Uh, he's a funny guy. Uh, Spirituality is no laughing matter. It isn't. Well, it's joyful anyway. <laughs> uh, but just, just a, a short intro of, of Lance. I've really got a couple of pages worth of introduction for him, so I will try to keep this short. Wow. <laughs> Uh, he's honored. the founder and president and chairman of the board of Integrated Care, the iCare Corporation. Uh, he's had 35 different jobs in his life, and I got to tell you, that beats me. I've got 32 jobs. <laughs> well, you're older. <laughs> you're smarter, too. Better looking. Uh, Your breath is more minty. So, uh, things that you might want to know about him is even though he never finished. Well, wait a minute. He barely finished high school. Uh, he runs his own company, and he he calls himself a white-collar redneck. So figure that one out. Uh, and just by telling you those couple of things, you can imagine that he's a lot of fun. Uh, he's passionate about what he does. Uh, his... His corporation, uh, I have to tell you, I went on his website and I examined the credentials of everybody there, and it's just a, an amazing organization. We help people. It's free therapy for babies, birth, infants and toddlers, birth to three, and uh, PTOT and speech go into their homes and developmental specialists. They know child development, and uh, they give the parents ideas and techniques and tips and suggestions to utilize until they come back usually an hour per session and we help people it's great it we help people so now you've heard the end of the podcast so let's let's start from <laughs> the beginning to figure out how the heck he got there uh so lance I'm, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to tell us about your spiritual journey from uh childhood until the present day and then I'll ask you some questions about that. Well, so that's, you're on. Okay, that's gonna. I'm gonna have to just be real brief here. I used to have dreams when I was younger, first ones, and I knew they were different. And um, I always wake up the same way every time. My mouth is dry. My mouth is open. My throat is dry. I can't swallow. My head ends up where my feet started out, and uh, my you know I'm inverted in the bed, and the blankets wrapped around me like a python. And it's always been a restless sleep, and the dreams were always the same. I was big and small at the same time, and I read it, forgot about them, that, and then whatever, had, an ex had the other experience, came back one time. I thought I was damn dying, and um, but I didn't. And um, my lungs, trying to describe this sensation during the experience, all these memories flooded back into me from my youth. I completely forgot about them for 20 years anyhow. And, uh, <clears throat> and I'm... Uh, and but I didn't die, and then I saw an article written by Bob Monroe, Robert Monroe. He has an institute, and it's great stuff. That stuff's real, and I had a lot of great experiences down there. But I called Bob because he described the same daggone experience I had, and he under, he ended the interview in this article I wrote by asking the interviewer, "Do you understand what we were being taught?" And I'm like, "No, I don't know what we we're being. I wasn't. <laughs> what the hell is going on here?" So I tried to talk to him. He wouldn't talk to me. So I went to the Monroe Institute and asked him the question. And um, he sloughed me off. I have no idea what he said, but he just waved his hand like this, like no big deal or something. But pretty fascinating. Um, I've had visions. Um, you know, we raised deer. My dad found a little baby fawn deer when I was younger and took it home, and we raised it. And we had three more after that. And the first one, though, I somehow was responsible. The second one, I didn't have the gate 
shut the whole way on the fence, and the deer got out. And I was, I took our dog and Penny, a German short hair pointer, smart dog. I explained it to her, and she, we went through the woods, and I'm following her, and she's on the trail, and we come out to a cornfield with a bob wire fence. And I found the deer's, the 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 deer's hair on the bob wire in the cornfield. That was it, and I was very upset about it. Went to sleep that night and had a dream, and uh, in the house I lived in. Come down the stairway and out the picture window to the back of the yard where we kept the deer. And I saw three angels, classic angels, one on either side of the deer and one in front of the deer on his knees, beckoning the angel. They had the halos in my dream, you know, the wings, all white, pure white, brilliant white. And they're coaxing the deer back. And three days later, I come down them stairs and there it was about in the same position so i got the deer back in the pen that's pretty cool i've had a vision of my wife meditating one year and two weeks before i met her um i've had many visions uh, many 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 visions meditating and stuff it's yeah. it's cool so how about your experience growing up did you did you have any religious background did your family take you to church yeah we went Was to there... church yeah we okay. went to church right i didn't really like it went to Summer camp, Bible church, you know, gave the parents a break for a week. I never liked that at all. Yeah. And um, I mean, my grandma was a devout Methodist, and um, she was a spiritual figure in my life. And and um, and I asked her one time how a priest makes holy water, and she didn't know. I said, you just boil the hell out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, that's just the way you go. Um, but I've always, you know, had a reverence for the spirit, my terminology growing up. Do you know where that came from, or it's just it's within, something it's, that was it's, there? It's within all of us. Yeah. It's within all of us. There's nothing mm -hmm. that does not have the force that holds it together. Everything is intelligent. Everything has intelligence. Grass has the intelligence to be grass. It cannot become a rock. Well, maybe after a few million years, maybe, right? Yeah. So every, there's an intelligence to all things. There is. And there's divinity in all things, beauty in all things. Harder to find in some people. Dr. Bob, Dr. Love here, he, Dr. Dove, he, um, it's I, easy. I go by Dr. Love if you want. It's <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, that's what you exhibit, buddy. And it's really easy to see divinity in you, easily seen. Beacon of light in the darkness, as you are. Well, like, as you said, there's divinity in all of us. Yes. So, uh, yes. But human, everything is in a constant state of change. Everything is in a state of becoming. There is nothing that is not becoming. Right? The mountain becomes sand. You'll never see it. Right? A seed becomes the mighty oak. You never, you know, it's hard to see. But everything is in a state of becoming. Human beings, in my opinion, are in a greater state of becoming than anything else that I'm aware of. Uh, and that's the way it is, because it's the human consciousness that is unparalleled. The great human experiment, right? Divinity. It is. It is. Uh, what is word? It is. Um, it is like unheralded. Huh? Monroe spoke about it. Huh? You know, Monroe put it this way: that a um, a graduate of the human Earth life experience is highly regard it in all other systems you can think of the great masters you know highly revered so the the, the human uh, adventure the human earth life experience is 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 it's um it's it's um what is the word it is is it so i'm i'm just full of questions here lance uh because i took a look at your book and I gotta say that I've never laughed so much. That's good to hear. <laughs> and had so many chuckles going Thank through you. somebody's book before. That makes me feel good. I wrote it to make people laugh. Well, it's uh, I don't know. Your sense of humor probably wouldn't resonate with everybody. Probably not. Uh, but it really tickled my funny bone, and and I just couldn't put it down. <laughs> That's uh, so nice of you to say. Thank you. And I've got to tell you, audience, you'll love this book if you're into stream of consciousness, <laughs> because it it definitely just uh, 
just takes you into the mind of Lance. <gasps> and <laughs> I feel like I really know you just just from going through this book. Uh, the I book quit. is called Outdoor Adventures. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see it in front of us. Outdoor Adventures by Elliot. E-L-I-O-T. <laughs> That's Elliot, not idiot, Elliot. Well, read the book and that's yeah. open, open for debate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's uh, there are quite a few stories in there that, that take us on your outdoor adventures, and then I'd have to say your indoor adventures because yeah, there's a lot that's that's inside of you that that comes out in this book. Just stories. Uh, so one of my questions, and I, and I guess not being a skier, I, I always want to know why anybody wants to get at the top of the mountain and go <laughs> so many miles an hour. Uh, it's fun. O- over Hill and Dale and, and with trees in front of you because uh, I know on a motorcycle I had a couple concussions, but your stories of, of ski accidents make me think. No such thing as an accident. Why does this guy keep <laughs> keep doing this over and over it's again? It's fun. Ah, it's it was fun. fun. I quit all that though. Yeah. The story about smashing my heels. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I, you know, I'm one who believes that life life has lessons to teach us. And it will keep teaching us the same lesson yes. until we finally get the message. <laughs> right. The pain will go away when you finally realize what you're supposed to learn from it, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Life. Just what you said. It'll keep coming back around. That's like an immutable law of life. Yeah. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> well, I met you uh, at a spiritual fair. Yeah. And... Uh, I was watching you from a distance, and I saw you raising your hands and projecting energy and making me feel like, okay, there's an energy healer. He's not quite doing Reiki, but he it looks similar to Reiki. I've got to go over and find out what this guy is doing. I remember that. Uh, I looked up to you because you're taller. Yeah. <laughs> So I was before I knew you. I was looking up to you. I I was interested in uh, you know what it was that you were all about. So still trying to figure that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so one of my questions is, where did you get the idea mm. <clears throat> that you had the capability to help people just by? working with energy with those people how did that I, come to you i put my hands on we'll skipping ahead here a little bit what i do is i i put my hands on people and um and help them i've got about a 95 percent success rate healing people with energy i feel it within me uh, it started off as electrical electrical sensations years ago. i can't even remember how to describe it years ago but i could feel like electricity moving in my body after doing tai chi for six months and then um, blah, 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 and then kept meditating and being appreciative, right? Giving thanks to the great spirit, whoever's listening, and asking for more. And I, appreciation really, to me, seems to be a cornerstone of how I developed this um, ability to help people with, with human energy rays. And, um, and I went 10, 12 years with no confirmed asking people, can you feel this? And it weirded people out, so I quit doing that. <laughs> it took me a while. I'm a little hard-headed. You read my book, you'll find out how hard I had and I am, smacking my head on the ground and whatever. Um, but I figured out don't do that no more. But one day I was able to transfer to someone. It was our daughter. She was five and sleeping in our bed again. Uh, she was five. But you know what? By the time when she turned 18, we finally told her, that's it, honey. You have to get out of the bed. We mean it this time. Okay, that's a joke. I, I I was hoping that was a joke. <laughs> so I wake up in the morning, and my little beautiful daughter's hand is on my shoulder, my right shoulder. We're both facing the same way. Her knees are pressed into my lower back, and it made me uncomfortable. It's what woke me up, but I moved my back away from her, and her hand kept on my shoulder, which was really endearing. 
And I just puddled right there, like dad puddled, like, ooh, a little daughter hand on my shoulder. Yeah, cool. And I was listening to her breathing. And <sighs> a child in a deep sleep. And I'm doing my thing, meditating, giving thanks, you know. And I get these energy rushes up the spine. Uh, now it's changed. It used to, back then, it used to just start at the base of the spine, like kundalini, I guess, and fill the limbs and out the head like a volcano, like a fountain, and you know whatever. And but um, but now it's like uh, when I help someone, it's like you know, oh, the, my entire chakra is all ignite almost at once. It seems with a degree of ecstasy. And I thought and I got that. It's very pleasurable. It's wonderful. And um, and I thought to myself, huh. Oh, I wonder if I could transfer this to Nicola. And I brought the energy up. And uh, for the first time in my life, she got about 12 or 10 to 12% of the strongest I've ever felt it. And uh, I felt for the first time in my life, I could feel her receiving it. It left my body out into her hand. It didn't go up into my head. It just all went into her hand. But my thought was, I wonder if I can transfer this to Nicola. And she, I remember thinking, wow, she's taking it. And then she took it. And her breathing stopped. He just stopped breathing for like 15 seconds, something like that. And I waited there, put a space around the moment, you know, wait. And then she sucked all the air out of the room. If I would have had my eyes open, I would have seen all the curtains flying into her mouth. That's how big she sucked the air out of that room with. And uh, she went back to her normal deep sleeping pattern of breathing. <sighs> a small child in deep sleep <clears throat> a few minutes past 10 or something like that and i thought i gotta try this again that brought the energy up more and um it was stronger 18 to 20 percent and it was faster at the time and halfway through she jerked her hand off of me and had a spasmodic episode right there in the bed thrashing around flailing arms and legs, kicked all the blankets off, slap, 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 slap. And I'm like, whoa! I get up, I'm on my elbow looking at her face. She's on her back in the early moon, about 6 in the morning. light was just starting to come up. And I watched her face, and her eyebrows were touching like she was in pain. I'm going, wow. And um, <clears throat> then I watched her eyebrows detach, and her face softened. And I got out of bed. She just laid there sleeping. I gave her breakfast, Cheerios, I think it was. And I asked her if she had any dreams, because I'm curious now. And she goes, no, Dad, <laughs> why? I'm like, I don't know. Never mind. So that's the first time I could, and I've been using it to help people ever since. You can reverse it, but I have never done it. Yeah. So, so that was, ah, she's 25 now. So that I've been doing this for 20 years. And I started using that to help people ever since. It's amazing. It's just wonderful. Yeah. And if I have it, I never studied healing. I never wanted to be a healer, nothing. I mean, I'm a good guy, you know, golden rule kind of guy. I help people, you know, be polite, you know, stuff like that, yeah. you know. Don't wake up, kill kittens, and be happy about it, right? Don't confuse your pain with someone else, your joy with someone else's pain. You know, basic tenets, golden rule stuff. So, but I have the ability. And if I have it, that means everybody's got it, period. Yeah. Just like jokes about menstrual cramps aren't funny, doctor, period. There's, <laughs> I'm not going to laugh because I'll be laughing all the way through the show. So Laughter's good for you. I just, uh, I appreciate your humor, but I won't assume that everybody does. It's just a uh, joke. It's <laughs> just a joke, folks. Yeah. <laughs> if your name's Karen or Thaddeus, all right, put your fingers in your ears. Okay, so <laughs> this energy, there had to be at some point, a sense of what is this? Where did this come from? What? what? It's vital energy. I know. Mean, I really don't know, but the only thing that I can say is that it is Yogananda described it as vital energy. Uh, it is of the source. It, it's you know, it's not. It's it's not like it's it's not like it's coming from outside of me. It, it is all within me. All right. So you you reference Yogananda. So you've yeah. you've read. Yes. The Autobiography of a oh, Yoga. Oh, great book. I take it. Great okay. book. Great book. All right. Oh, yeah. Great book. 
Wonderful. Yogananda is what vision I had. That's amazing, right? Um, I'm trying to meditate. I was seeing a nympho at the time and it didn't work out, but w whatever. I was agitated in the morning. I was getting up and going to go to work. I just started my business and stuff, and I'm going to meditate every day, start my day, but I could not slip into that deep peace place, you know, which is real easy for me to go to after years of meditating, blah, 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 and I'm agitated, and I can't slip into that samadhi state, you know? And I never would have realized I even had this vision because I was so focused on whatever, meditating, and but it's not working, I'm agitated. And I was like, if it was not for the physical sensation that I instantly went into samadhi, instantly, because I was sitting in this huge, vast room, you can't even see the sides of it, big flat f flat floor, and I'm the only one sitting, I'm sitting there like I met it. I would never would have noticed this had it not been for the physical sensation. But Yogananda came up to me, and he touched me somewhere about my head, and boom, instantly. So was, this was during a meditation? Yes. Okay. Totally conscious. But, um, and I thank him still to this day. Christ, Mother Mary, they came to me in visions too. Pretty cool. Um, and I also liked reading about, uh, What's his name? Padre Pio. Okay. Great insight there. All right. So here you are, just barely getting through high school. But I hear you talk about all these spirit, spiritual leaders and gurus who you've yeah. read. Yeah. So where did you... I don't know, get the inclination or did you did you have someone who encouraged you to read these people or how did it occur to you that I want to get to know about this stuff more? I've always had a lot of questions, always, curious, you know, author of the universe, you know. I want to know why. Uh -huh. I want to know how. I want to, I want to. I just want to know. So I asked a lot of questions. People couldn't answer my questions. Jebby Brown, to answer your question, she was a waitress in the restaurant I worked at, and I didn't know how to cook, and <laughs> but I had a job. And, uh, and she gave me these spiritual books. She really opened me up to it, and she was a wonderful person um, and opened me up to it. I was a voracious reader, and I wanted to read everything. That that book by Bob Bob Monroe, Journeys Out of the Body, she tried putting that in my hands before, and I'm like, no, that's just too damn weird for me. No. Yeah. <laughs> but years later, come back around, okay? That's yeah. the way it works, right? Uh -huh. Insatiable. I quit asking people my questions when I was 23. They could not answer them. I found out the answers to my own satisfaction. Okay, so it was basically your own curiosity yeah. plus somebody saying... Maybe you want to try this book. Maybe yes. try that book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, read yeah. this. Tell me what you think. That's a good book. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah. I've I've read a lot about your redneck life in Ligonier. I'm glad to make which you is laugh. Your hometown, yes, and sir. you're still there. Yep. Living champion, but off of the office in Ligonier. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. So this is not. This is not, you are not, the typical redneck uh, country boy. Uh, so how has this part of your life affected your relationships with friends and family and, and the other people? Thing? Yeah. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> you stumped, well, you the, stumped the, Elliot the entertainer. <laughs> Do people look at you and say weirdo, or do they say, "Hey, even there. more than they did before"? Yeah, <laughs> there's a guy who can really help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it it it. Some people are freaked out. I've heard people say, "What did you just do to me?" Right, but it's always for the highest, greatest good. It's no harm to anyone, ever. Yeah. Period. And I'll skip that joke again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. I feel the same thing every time I help someone. It's like champagne electricity, like the chakras opening up and with a grade of ecstasy. It's really wonderful. And um, <clears throat> I always feel the same thing. The longest I've held hands on someone to transfer the energy, I'm hands on, and uh, the, the, it's been two minutes, and that has occurred like three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's just hands on. As long as it moves, I keep hands there. When it quits, we take hands away. We have a conversation. Go from there. Yeah. 
usually there's a 50% reduction in pain, typically. Uh huh. And then <laughs> what I like to have is zero. Sure. Maybe, anyway, yes. People say, and now I ask people, it's interesting because now over the past year or two, it's like I, I asked them, I said, what's your pain level now? And I instantly, no. And it's very uh, odd, uh, minimal, ha- an occurrence that uh, I do, I, I know. As soon as I ask, what's your pain level? It's like two, four. And I say, is that good enough for you? And they're, yeah, that's good. And I say, that's not good enough for me. Let's get it to zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And typically it happens. Uh-huh. Not always. So there is you- nothing that could not be healed. That's why I'm, I, I want to see if I give the energy yeah. with your with your tremors. Well, my sense is you don't heal anybody. That the person heals themselves. Ultimately, that's correct. But you facilitate their ability to heal themselves. Yes. Does that sound like yes. like what we're talking yes. about here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is. I have to agree, hundred percent. I'm a bit of a facilitator, uh, a boost, give you a boost with one's intention and your own vital energy, your yeah. soul stuff. It's soul, the soul energy. So there's there's something inherent, and I'm, I'm not saying this about your process, but just your innate sense of, of how to live. Because you talk about Time spent in gratitude and feeling grateful. Appreciate everything, need nothing. And where where does that come from? First, it is a thought. Right? All things come as thought. And um, appreciation is a... It really greases the skids in the ethereal realms. That's my opinion. Don't listen to me. Trust yourself. <laughs> That's yeah. my thought. Be appreciative. Appreciate yeah. everything. You know, I put it this way. When I was dating my wife, I took her some sweet corn and some wildflowers up there and placed it in her driveway. Right? She was out on a date with someone else, and I wrote her a poem. And one of the poem uh, phrases was, the beauty that you see is a reflection of you. See it everywhere and in all that you do. This is way before I became a healer guy. Right? So... Uh, Confucius, I learned this this past summer, two summers ago. Confucius put it this way: he said, "There is beauty everywhere, but few see it." Right. Right. Yeah. Right. The mind. Right. It is the mind. Mm. Perceptions, thoughts. There are beliefs. I think in my <clears throat> meanderings of this world, right, <laughs> the yeah. life, my. Uh, <clears throat> And my searching and my need to understand, my wanting to understand stuff, right, I, I have pretty much concluded that we all have the beliefs. That is what um, it is what shapes our lives. You see, what you believe can be. Even if you don't believe in something does not mean it's, it is not is, right? And so most people um, have these beliefs that they are unworthy or undeserving of whatever it is. They're not enough. And that is the best work to do is to go within the self and ask the self, who is it within me that is feeling blankety blank, whatever. If anyone has an uncomfortable, this is a great, most powerful technique I have ever done in my life, period. (laughs) And um, it is whenever one has an uncomfortable feeling uh, in their being, their consciousness, an uncomfortable feeling, right? It is to stop in that moment unless you're driving. Close the eyes, breathe deeply, go within the self, and ask the self, who is it within me that feels blankety blank? And you'll have an answer. And view that one as an orphan from the past that has been repressed and suppressed, shut away, not acknowledged, and allow them to speak and let them know. You give them time to speak, and they'll talk to you. That's not, view them as an orphan within right? that has been abandoned, and bring them home to self. Reclaim them as part of soul, you see. Bring them in. Be the parental self, right? The super self, the adult self. And you let them know that you understand. Because if anyone's going to stand, understand how you feel, it's going to be you, right? And this is a dialogue I utilize. And here, take my hand. I understand. It's okay. Take my hand. You and me. You ever, you ever feel this way? You let me know. I'll be there for you, right? 
because you and me are stronger together you, uh, outside of you being over there fragmented over there when you were oh oh you little tiny self not strong enough not enough right take my hand together we are stronger I've utilized this many times, and um, I don't do it anymore. I don't have to. Yeah, right. sure. It's this integration of being, you see? And that is the purpose of life. You see, my opinion, don't listen to me, right? Trust yourself. But in my opinion, the purposes of life is to attain self-realization, right? Mm -hmm. To become fully conscious. We're always on the journey. There is no limit to consciousness. Yeah. So we can be humble with it. And, you know, in life, you know... Life is a, it's a harsh environment if you look at it in that way. It certainly can be true, right? But there's great joy in it as well, right? And life, every day you put your shoes on, you're taking a daggone chance going out in the world. You might get hit in the head with a piano, right? You never know what's going to happen, right? So it's like you're skating on thin ice every day. So if you're skating on thin ice, you might as well dance. Yeah. <laughs> so... I know we're jumping around here, audience, but you'll just have to bear with us because uh, this is a stream of consciousness program today. Stream. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, I've, I'm looking at, and from your book, this redneck who's doing a lot of waiter jobs, a lot of construction, hard labor jobs, Easy labor jobs, but just anything to get by. Those 35 jobs you had. Yeah. Uh, and having gone through that myself, I, I really understand that. And then suddenly talking about believing in yourself, you open a business. I had to eat. That is not only a business that is... Filling a, a definite need yeah. and a service. It's called early intervention. But it's something that you can offer to families at no charge to them. Yes, it's an entitlement program. So tell me how Pardon. you got from this guy who's, who's used to making a living with his hands. I worked for a, to this. a nursing... Uh, I'm, <clears throat> uh, I had... I was doing handstands on a pool table on a Friday night, acting like a werewolf on acid, okay? Having fun with my spitting, drinking beer with my friends, shooting pool. And a physical therapist saw my antics. He said, I should hire you. I said, yeah, you should. And then 18 months later, he hired me to be his director of marketing for nursing homes, right? And um, I gave him my resume. There's not much on it. It's yeah. just labor jobs. So, um, and uh, then 18 months later, he hired me out of about three other people with marketing degrees. And I told him, I said, I'll double your business in a year. And I did. Right? And um, <clears throat> that's, And then I went to the Monroe Institute. Quick short story. Went to the Monroe Institute because I want to understand shit. Because I called him up on the phone. He's going to give me a $100,000 bonus when the company goes public. Okay? He sold the company. He's going to go public when that company goes public because we're growing fast. Boom. He's going to give me hundred grand. I called him on the anniversary date. He'd never sent me my damn money. hundred grand. Hey, Bill. You said you'd do this. I never said that. You're crazy. 20 minutes of argument. I hung up the phone, dialed the Monroe Institute. I had that information on my kitchen table for over a year because I want to understand, but it looked like it was too much of a weird damn place for <laughs> have my interest. So, yeah. I, But I kept the info, and I went down there, and I had many experiences there. And after that, well, there's life-changing experiences that change how you live your life. And I quit my job as director of marketing because I just – they just gave me conciliatory pats in the head because they knew I was a skinny little white collar redneck could shoot snuff and you know. <laughs> yeah. So I just got tired of the corporate world and grew my hair long not years ago. And um started my own business, played a lot of solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it, right? And in spite of me, it worked out, right? The only for-profit company, right? I don't want to talk about integrated care too much. We help people. That's good, right? Other things more important, like um, like weed the garden of the mind of the beliefs that do not serve the self. Mm. Mm -hmm. It does good work, man. Yeah. But there is, there is a belief or a faith that comes from inside that says, I can do this. I can, there's a need for this. 
I'm going to create something that fills that need. And that, that sounds like it's, it's what you did. Well, I just... And it's not only a matter of servicing clients, it's a matter of servicing the people who work for you. We work together, yes. Yeah. So anyway, I just, I just found that fascinating. I just thought it's it's a good it's we don't I don't have if I had to rely on healing okay I for money I'd be homeless and hungry yeah. all the time okay <laughs> just so you all know right but, but integrated care that I started and it it allows us I don't have to buy 50 pound pack sacks of powdered milk for the winter yeah right? <laughs> well I I just <clears> look <throat> at that and I think that's a beautiful thing it that, is it's a beautiful thing it is so we help people I you know, I I didn't want to have the day go without being able to talk about that a little bit. Anyway, so what what brought about this book? Why did you decide to write a book? I always wanted to write a book. Always, not always. I just always wanted to be a writer. I guess somehow. i one of the stories in the book is the Grand Canyon. That's a long story. <laughs> and um, I was gonna. There's a point there. I was gonna carry a portable typewriter to the bottom of the damn Grand Canyon to teach myself typing, maybe because maybe I don't have anything else to do for two hours while I got to hike out there in the morning. <laughs> right? Yeah. Down nine miles and back up nine the next day. I believe that's how many miles it is. One of the toughest trails on the South Rim. Hermit Trail goes to Hermit Rapids, and um, but I didn't take that. I took my two-man Coleman cooking stove with me. I never used it once, <laughs> and uh. it kept banging into my damn hip on the way down. And and uh, so write the book. I just started to write the book, or start to write down stories. You know, and then there it is. It's written for fifty-three different types of readers. They are all named in the book. It covers twenty-three phobias I didn't know I had <laughs> until I had these experiences. Yeah. And it references, uh, there's seven fun facts, there's eight fun tricks, there's there's fun stuff. And um, uh, there's bonus stories that are free, uh, ten bonus stories, no extra charge, they come with the book. It comes with a free lifetime warranty, all of the stories are warranted to be true. Uh, and it has a warning on the back that says, if you have a fear of heights and aversion to bad grammar or a strong distaste for foul language, you might want to skip some parts. <laughs> As the great Robert Allen Monroe once said, fear is the great barrier to human growth, but you probably won't be able to tell until after. And good luck with that. Yeah. So let's get into the Monroe Institute for a minute. Fascinating. Because you, you held off on that for a while. And, and then you took a leap of faith and said, all right, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this. Amazing. And <clears throat> Robert Monroe's work does seem to be out there uh if you're if you're not aware of his process to where he got to the point that he is uh and if you read if you read his book that that covers mm -hmm. all that uh his process to get where he is and then all the good work that the Monroe Institute has done research wise. Oh to, yeah. To teams of physicists and engineers and doctors and all kinds of people. Yeah. Uh, 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 for decades, right? <clears throat> and mapping out the um, Monroe uh, was mapping out the highways of the universe. One of the things he did tell us down there, he didn't put this in any of his books, but when I was down there for a week, we had a speaker every night, Joe McMonagle. He was a remote viewer, double spy for the army. They poisoned him and he'd lived. And he was in there to talk to us about that and um, <clears throat> remote viewing. He charges the oil companies big money, but for help to find missing people, he does that for free. Yeah. And that's Joe McBonacle, and um, nice guy. And uh, Ben Monroe, um, he told us there one night, he's out of his body, he's flying around doing his astral voyaging, and he somewhere in Europe, he didn't know he was vague about it, and he high-rise apartments, you know, multiple stories, uh, 100 stories high, and he flies into this one room, he's on the balcony looking in there, and he sees this fella working on some type of drafting table, and Monroe's just sitting there out of his body experience, he related this to us, <clears throat> you won't see this written anywhere, and uh, he, he, he was observing this fella, and the fella noticed someone was watching him. And Monroe related, his guy stood up from his drawing room board, drawing board, and like this, and he 
tilted his head a little side, he closed his eyes, and he turned around and looked right at Bob and squinted <laughs> his eyes like this. And then they communicated, communicated telepathically. And um, I guess he was a Highlander. And uh, they live for like a thousand years or hundreds of years. They have to keep moving around. And there was about 5,000 of them on the planet back in the 80s, I think this was. They exist. Yeah. Monroe said that. Whatever. Now, beliefs. Now, here's an interesting thing about beliefs. You brought it up. I'm glad I remembered. Beliefs, right? There is more to reality than what people believe. And if you believe something, that will steer your reality, you know? Right. Um, right. It will, it, will, it will influence what you experience, right? Or, or whatever. Or open it up. And um, But here is how to determine if you believe something or if you know it. Acid test in life. No right away. I learned this at the Monroe Institute. Unless you have, I could go on about beliefs, but whatever. Unless you experience something, end of the day, unless you experience it, it is a belief. Uh -huh. It is good to weed the garden of the mind of the beliefs that do not serve the self. Huh? Good luck. Yeah. You don't need it, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> what was your question? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. No, it was it was all about what, and and I guess my follow up question is, there was Lance going into the Monroe Institute, and there was Lance coming out of the Monroe Institute. Uh, what was the difference between the two Lances? Uh, many experiences, many many experiences. I had a lot down there, a lot, a lot. One of, I mean, <clears throat> amazing. No, that's. I, <laughs> okay. Well, starting off, many visions, okay? And I'm conscious, right? You lie in a check unit. When you go to the Monroe Institute, it's a gateway program. That's what you do every, I don't know. So there you sit in a check booth there called, you sleep in there too. It's a mesh copper line. It's spacious. They got lights in there if you want to set the mood for yourself for some damn reason. But there's copper mesh and copper plate steel surrounding every check unit. You get, listen to earphones. Everyone does the same Monroe tape the gateway experience tapes at the time and you have experiences and um and i had a lot started off with visions of a can opener right what do you do with a can opener? it opens things up i had a few of those i remember them vividly right just seeing a can opener, like you stick on your refrigerator mine was white and then i had image where i have chest shield protector on for chest, you know, protect heart, protect feelings, something like that. And I take it over and I throw it off at the edge of the abyss into infinity, and I watch it just burn up like a burning star of the night. That was an amazing experience. Opened up for other experiences, which I had. Mm, didn't believe in past. I used to believe in past lives prior. They used to make sense to me. Uh, they fit my construct of how things can make sense. But after the Monroe Institute, I did not believe him anymore because I had the experience, more than one. Uh, and uh, that's just how I learned that uh, experience is the only way to know. Uh, many experiences, many, many. Old samurai warrior, <laughs> died on a ship, drowning, stormy sea, and um, something I rarely ever speak about, but since you bring it up, another past life experience I had, there was a few more, but another one was who, they, the Monroe Institute, they have this, uh, one of the tapes is the five questions, right? And one of the questions in that, I can't remember all of them, but um, the last one, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, I know that. I don't even have to write that down. I'm taking notes while I'm having all this. I'm conscious, right? I'm writing notes mm -hmm. right? while I'm having this, right? And um, flipping the pages over while I'm having these experiences so how I can describe them to someone and blah, blah, blah. And um, one, it's going to be in my next book, whatever, is um, – who was I and where was I before this present physical human incarnation? I'm all in. I'm like SpongeBob. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. You're in Focus 12, a place where you can get answers, ask questions, get answers. And I'm all in. I'm like, yeah. And just hanging out, holding that mind and thought. I get the picture of a star system in my mind's eye. Psh, goes away. Later, psh, comes up. It's closer. Psh, goes away. Psh, comes up. I'm coming around a moon. And there is, it's like I'm in a rocket ship, and I'm out in space, right? 
I see this in my mind. I'm making notes. And I come around this moon, some satellite object, the moon. And there is really uh, this bright, pale green light coming out from behind the other side of this moon thing. And I remember thinking, I wonder what's causing that light. <laughs> image goes away. <laughs> Next image I get, it's me coming over this foreign scape. That's how I describe it, foreign scape. <laughs> like a plane coming down doing a low flyby. And there's these crystal-like uh, rocks that are embedded in the foreign scape, and they were alive. I don't know. I just knew they were alive. They hadn't, I don't know. I, they were alive. That's all I can tell you. And then I come in, and I see this uh, little cabin like you'd find in Nebraska somewhere, a little cabin out there, and there's a light shining through, and there's tiny, gi gi tiny, tiny cabin, giant sheep lake creatures in the background. Their legs were like 20, 30 feet tall, and they looked like sheep, huge, gargantuan things, long, skinny legs. I don't know what the hell they were, but I saw them. I don't know what it means, whatever. And then there was a light coming in through this cabin, and I'm looking at the light, and you know, I'm thinking, I wonder what's inside that cabin. Next image I get. I am face to face with a um, a very old, ugly alien. Giant head, big eyes, old, ancient, and um, it freaked me out. Uh -huh. I was visibly shaken after I walked out of there. People coming up to me, going, they could tell. I'm like Bugs Bunny, an old Bugs Bunny cartoon. Bugs Bunny never gets shaken, you know. But one time in one of those cartoons, he gets shaken. He goes. Arr! He walks out. He's all discombobulated. That's like how I came out of that experience. And four people came up to me, say, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just have to process this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This okay. is interesting. Well, whatever. What matters is now, right? Oh, now yeah. is all that anybody has. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I rambled on there. That's all right. You're a storyteller. That's <laughs> trying to get better, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's to be expected. Well, uh, we have come to the end of our time together. Sad. And there is. Uh, I'm sad now. Always more to know about you. It's the uh, same for anybody. <laughs> so, at the end of each of my podcasts, I ask the guest to leave us with a few words of wisdom. Oh. And I know that pulling pulling from uh, Ananda and pulling from Robert Monroe and pulling from all these these other people you've read. Uh, there's a lot of words of wisdom there. But let's hear yours. I think the fundamental um, thing that I can impart to everybody is that you are enough. Everyone is enough, right? But you've got to do your own inner work and get underneath that and not realize the divinity that you are. Embrace your own simple divinity. I'll, I'll, do I have two minutes? Yeah. Here's what I will end it with, with the words of wisdom. I wrote this in 10 minute, 12 minutes driving. Came I Just me, my future wife, and I got puppy love real bad, and I'm rhyming shit in my head, and I'm thinking, that's good. I will write that down. My radio was broken in my car. <clears throat> and I grabbed a piece of paper off the floor. I just happened to know it's the time because there was a clock in the car, and I'm rhyming and stuff, and I'm thinking, that's good. I'm going to write that down. And the first two sentences was what I had and then as soon as I wrote it down it opened up just like this and because I think it sounds better in a Scottish accent I'll tell it to you that way huh? <laughs> okay. oh lads and lasses here you go may many blessings befall you now lads and lasses things such as this you speak your hearts and your minds huh and with calmness there comes bliss and you drop now all old ways of being for now you know they can no longer be and you let out your light Embrace your own simple divinity. You're really good at that, Bob. And um, so stand up for the self and to the self be true in any conversation or act it is that you do. For is it not within that one truly finds the core? And as this is embraced, the brighter still it grows. Ever so, yet more and more. And is not all of life a wonder? Huh? Wow. The connected beauty of it all. And the movement now being so rapid... It is to be responded to one's own inner call. And here's my favorite part. For if but the faintest of light should be cast into the darkest of room, more vast then becomes one's sight, you see. The whole world then so much more illumined. So it is to look within one's own silence and listen there in the stillness within that can be seen. And you feel, you feel with your knowing that we each play a part in the grandness of God's great dream. 
that in each day that passes, as each moment unfurls, that is to be fully who you are, for truly, that is your gift to the world. Well, thank you for your gift to the world. If my gift was half as good as yours, I'd be twice as bright. That's one way of looking at it, and I meant that. Thank you for your invitation. Well, audience, as always, take what resonates with you, 